For most people, a luxury cruise is the holiday of a lifetime. A special time to relax with family and friends, visit new places, and create lasting memories. It's the 7th of March, 2018, and the Donnelly family from Phoenix, Arizona, 37-year-old Sandra, her 42-year-old husband Wayne, and their two young sons, seven and nine, are about to embark on a seven-day Caribbean cruise. For Sandra and Wayne, the trip is intended to restore some harmony to a troubled marriage. Setting sail from the port of La Romana in the Dominican Republic, the ship will travel to the Caribbean islands of Grenada, Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Antigua. But after the second day, Sandra will never be seen on board, either by the ship's staff or any of its passengers, again. Phoenix couple Wayne and Sandra Donnelly were about to embark on a seven-day cruise with their two young sons. The marriage had been under pressure and the trip was an opportunity for them to work on their relationship. Wayne, an elementary school teacher, met Sandra, also a teacher, back in 2005 and they married two years later, welcoming their first son in 2009. When their second son was born, Sandra decided to take some time off from her teaching career to be at home with the boys. They moved into a larger house, and once the boys were both in school, Sandra felt she was ready to go back to work. However, by this time, she was looking for a career in property and decided to leave teaching. After taking the required training, she became a licensed estate agent in 2017. Shortly after they got engaged, Wayne introduced her to Kevin, an old college friend of his. Kevin recalled thinking at the time that they were something of an odd couple as they didn't seem to have many interests in common. He kept his thoughts to himself, but wasn't surprised that whenever he and Wayne got together for a game of golf, Wayne complained about how things were at home. Sandra sounded like someone who always had to get her own way. Kevin sensed that Wayne felt trapped in the marriage and vividly remembered a night when he had to calm Wayne down after he arrived with his nerves shattered. When Kevin decided to put his house up for sale not long after Sandra got her license, he felt he owed it to Wayne to offer her the opportunity to be his agent for the sale. But after he met with her a few times, he found her manner abrasive and decided not to go through with her services. Kevin wasn't the only one who believed that the Donnelly's marriage was under strain. Neighbours witnessed a number of arguments between the pair. One Saturday, Sandra organised an impromptu garage sale, gathering together several items from their garage and basement and placing them on the front lawn. As neighbours came to look at what was on offer, they were stunned to find out that when Wayne came home from golf, he discovered Sandra had put out several items belonging to him without him knowing about it. It's already past the point of no return when couples start to do things deliberately to antagonise each other. 
and on a cruise that was meant to put their marriage back on track, the reality of the Donnelly's situation was on full display, even before they got on the ship. Going on a vacation can be a real test of a relationship. It can make or break a couple even when there hasn't been any problems. So now you take a couple who has been having difficulties and you put them in the enclosed environment of a cruise ship, things can really get to a breaking point fast. While waiting in line to board, Sandra and Wayne got into a vicious argument that was noticed by everyone within earshot. It's really telling that the kids didn't react at all when their parents were screaming at each other. This indicates to me that this was a common thing, that they were used to their parents fighting in this manner. After boarding, the family sat down to eat in the ship's restaurant, and staff noticed that things were very tense between the couple. They had overheard Sandra and Wayne trading passive-aggressive remarks to each other the entire time. In the evening, a member of the ship's housekeeping staff went to the room to fold out the bed for the boys to sleep on. They noticed that the family were now in good spirits, much happier than they had been during dinner. The first day was spent at sea. On day two, after the ship docked at the island of Antigua, the Donnellys prepared to disembark to do some sightseeing. They had been walking all morning, and while in a museum, Sandra complained that the shoes she was wearing had aggravated an old injury. Angry that she had ignored his advice to wear more suitable shoes for a walking tour, Wayne pulled a pair of sports shoes from his rucksack and yelled at her to put them on. The ugly incident was observed by others. Even though Sandra had appeared to be the aggressor initially, now it's Wayne who's lashing out. It's interesting to note that they have no problem showing this kind of viciousness towards each other in front of other people, even complete strangers. That really says something about this relationship as well. What little patience Wayne has with Sandra has run out. Often people try to stay together for the children. They try to make a marriage work as much as they can. But is that really the right thing to do? To those who witnessed the exchange, Sandra appeared shaken. Following the excursion in Antigua, the Donnellys boarded the ship once again. With the security system registering Sandra returning to the ship with the family. The angry exchanges continued. When you have a case like this where two parents are arguing heatedly with each other in front of their children, it's doing huge damage to those children. Those little boys may not show what they're going through right now, but it'll show up later on in their lives. They're also being taught that this is what a healthy relationship is like. Wayne had had enough. He stopped arguing with Sandra and told the boys he'd take them to the ship's arcade and they left the room. Is it possible that Sandra and Wayne's arguments have started to attract attention? The 9th of March, day three of the Donnelly's Caribbean cruise, was to be the last time Sandra was seen by anyone on board the ship. What happened between the time she was seen that evening at dinner in the ship's dining room and the following day, where she just disappeared into thin air? The 
10th of March was the fourth day of a luxury Caribbean cruise that began at the port of La Romana in the Dominican Republic, sailing to Antigua before it headed for the islands of Guadeloupe, Martinique and Grenada. And on a trip, which was supposed to be a last-ditch attempt by Phoenix couple Sandra and Wayne Donnelly to save their marriage, it wasn't difficult for observers to see that things were a long way from all right, even before they'd boarded the ship. Two days later, visitors to a museum on the island of Antigua witnessed Wayne's reaction when Sandra complained about her shoes. The third day of the Donnelly's Caribbean cruise was the last time Sandra was seen by anyone on board the ship. How was it that the 37-year-old estate agent and mother of two would never be seen by anyone on board for the remainder of the entire cruise. It was noticed the following morning at breakfast that Sandra was not with Wayne and the boys in the dining room by the waiter who had seen the family eating together the previous evening. It's very difficult to hide things from people on a cruise ship. Even though these ships are quite large, it's still like a small town, a close-knit community. So people are going to notice if suddenly your wife isn't with you for a meal when you've always been sharing meals together. However, the fact that there was so much arguing between Sandra and Wayne could give him an excuse for her not being there. It was now day four of the cruise. Observers who had witnessed signs of the couple's bitter relationship while boarding on the first day saw Wayne alone with the boys in the morning. Sandra was nowhere in sight. The Donnelly's younger son appeared upset and Wayne was patient and attentive towards him. As the ship docked in the port of Pointe Pitre in Guadeloupe, Guests had the opportunity to disembark once again and do some more sightseeing. Wayne and the boys prepared to join an onshore excursion. But where was Sandra, who had not been seen for two days? Why wouldn't Sandra have joined Wayne and their kids on this excursion? Guadeloupe is an archipelago of 12 islands six of them inhabited, and a territory of France. Although it relies on France for financial support, tourism is a major part of the region's economy. It would be interesting to know what Wayne is thinking. Does he really believe that no one's going to notice that his wife is suddenly missing? And for that matter, what has he told his kids about their mother's whereabouts? If only we could read his mind. No one on board had seen Sandra since the previous day, when she had been registered, returning to the ship, following the stopover in Antigua. In the evening, when housekeeping arrived to get the bed ready for the boys, Wayne told them not to bother. Because there were only three people staying in the room now, not four, and that he and the boys would be sleeping together in one bed. Where was Sandra? What had happened to make him so certain that she would no longer be sleeping in the room? Wayne packed up the family's suitcases, putting Sandra's items in with his own. Despite Sandra being missing, Wayne and his two sons disembarked from the ship and made their way to the airport as if everything was normal. When a serious incident of this nature occurs on board a ship, it's really up to the captain to involve local authorities in the investigation.
could Sandra and Wayne's non-stop arguments finally have pushed one of them over the edge? On the horizon, a storm was brewing. Could it be a sign of something worse yet to come? It seems like she was the aggressor in this relationship. Maybe it got to a point where Wayne just snapped. He couldn't handle it anymore. He greatly outweighed Sandra and he was taller than her. If things got to a point where he was so angry, he probably just could have thrown her over the edge. If Sandra did somehow get thrown from the railing, whoever did it would need to use a lot of force considering the height of cruise ship railings. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration has guidelines in place mandating that all cruise ship deck and balcony railings have a minimum height of 42 inches. However, these same guidelines allow for a variance of three inches above or below that. This is because the average person has been determined to have a center of mass of about 42 inches or less. Every one of us has a breaking point, even if we don't think we do. The most mild-mannered people can be pushed past their limits. The most plausible explanation for somebody disappearing at sea is that they went overboard, either dead or alive. Is it possible that Donnelly disposed of his wife's body after he murdered her, or did he throw her over the railing while she was alive? On the 14th of March, after stopping at ports in Martinique and Grenada, the ship arrived back in the port of La Romana in the Dominican Republic at the end of the cruise. Wayne packed up the family's suitcases, putting items belonging to Sandra in with his own. Upon disembarkation, the electronic records showed that one less passenger was on the ship than there had been seven days earlier when this ship had set sail. When a crime of this serious nature happens aboard a cruise ship, it is the responsibility of the captain to involve the local authorities. Cruise ship crews are not equipped to handle anything like a missing person or a murder. They are not crime scene investigators. It certainly was far from the perfect crime. It's hard to say whether Wayne just didn't know about the technology, didn't know about these electronic records, or did he honestly believe that no one would notice that his wife was no longer with him? Either way, it was a pretty big mistake. A head count took place, and within a few hours, it was concluded that the missing person was a member of the Donnelly family. Wayne Donnelly was apprehended by the Dominican Republic National Police under suspicion of murder. At a preliminary hearing, he was remanded by a judge and held in custody while an investigation began. Elaine, Sandra's sister in California, was informed of her disappearance. Arrangements were made for the Donnelly sons to be flown to California to stay with her, while Wayne remained in custody in the Dominican Republic. These poor kids talk about trauma. Now they're without both parents, they're on a flight alone to their aunts in California, and who knows what they saw the night their mother disappeared. Dominican Republic criminal law applies to both citizens and foreigners. They can be detained for up to 48 hours without charge. And foreigners can be detained for the duration of the investigation and the trial process. 
to ensure they don't leave the country. Wayne told the police that the family were together up until the ship stopped at Pointe Pitre in Guadeloupe, where he'd taken his sons ashore on a sightseeing excursion. But when he returned to the ship, he discovered that Sandra, her suitcase, and her mobile phone were gone, leading him to believe that she'd left the ship during the stop there. Wayne told them that he assumed Sandra would either meet him and their sons when they arrived back in the US, or that she had left the marriage. The police weren't convinced that Sandra had simply walked away. They questioned why items belonging to her were in his luggage. The police aren't buying Wayne's story. They know Sandra would have never left her kids behind in that situation. Mothers don't just abandon their kids that way. Although he told the ship's housekeeping staff that evening that there would only be three people instead of four staying in the room, Wayne never reported Sandra missing to the authorities on board the ship for the entire remainder of the cruise. This immediately cast suspicion on him. Why wouldn't he report his wife missing even if she did leave the ship of her own free will on Guadeloupe? Keeping this information to himself really makes him look suspicious. Donnelly was assigned a lawyer. Hector Rodriguez was convinced of Wayne's innocence regarding Sandra's disappearance and believed that she should, in fact, be considered a missing person. The media quickly picked up the story. Media can be relentless when it comes to this kind of story. It has all the elements, the mystery, the intrigue, the drama between the two partners. But this isn't the kind of famous anyone wants to be. This is a really, really hard trial to be at. The family is torn apart by what happened. It's very, very hard for them to picture that this person could murder their mother. There's no coming back from this. Nothing is ever going to bring their mother back. On the 15th of March, the day after the end of the family's cruise, Wayne Donnelly was apprehended by the Dominican Republic National Police while waiting with his sons in the departure lounge of the Punta Cana International Airport for their flight back to Phoenix. He was taken into custody for questioning regarding his missing wife and his luggage was seized. At a court hearing, Donnelly told the judge that he and Sandra had quarreled the night before they arrived in Guadeloupe. That was the night Sandra disappeared and was nowhere to be seen aboard the ship following a stop in Antigua. If you have planned to leave your husband, especially on a cruise ship, you want to make sure that you had take everything you need with you. One would think this would include your children. And then there was the question of Sandra's missing suitcase. Wayne told the police Sandra's suitcase and her mobile phone were missing from their cabin when he and the boys returned from the excursion in Guadeloupe, which led him to believe that she had left the trip of her own free will. The police, however, had a different idea. They believed Donnelly may have stashed his wife's body in her suitcase before throwing it overboard. When you think about how a body could fit into a suitcase, you have to really envision what uh, the victim is now unresponsive. She has died. Before rigor mortis sets in, meaning the stiffening of the body, there is an opportunity for a manipulation of that body. If the perpetrator is in such of a state of mind, there could be the possibility that you could even break bones, to manipulate a small enough body into a big enough suitcase. The police deemed Sandra's missing suitcase the prime item of concern in their investigation. A body that has now been thrown overboard into the water and is in a suitcase, I would speculate that 
With the heat of the sun, it would almost be like a toaster oven. So it would ramp up the decomposition state of a body and the putrefaction would be enhanced as well. So it would create almost like a gas balloon-like effect in the body that would take the body and the suitcase from below the water to the surface where it would be acknowledged and found. Did Wayne Donnelly murder his wife Sandra and put her body in the suitcase? Or could he have lured her to the darkened area of the ship's deck that night and pushed her over the railing? getting rid of the suitcase in the same way. Once it was discovered that Sandra was not accounted for during disembarkation, the captain of the ship ordered the Donnelly's cabin to be sealed off so that a forensic examination could be conducted. But an error was made and the wrong room was sealed off. When the police boarded the ship to conduct their investigation, they discovered the Donnelly's room had been thoroughly cleaned and reassigned to another couple for the next cruise. This is a problem of crimes on cruise ships. The longer the cruise ship stays docked, the more money the cruise line loses. So there's a lot of pressure to keep moving. There's not a lot of time to do a perfect forensic investigation in the room. There's so much pressure to keep moving that a lot of evidence can be lost. A forensic examination and investigation was never performed on the Donnelly suite on the cruise ship. As a former medical examiner investigator, I would be very concerned that there was a missing person or perhaps even a deceased individual within that suite. So therefore, I would always secure the suite to protect or, say, preservation of evidence of what is going on within that suite. Usually, if an individual was thrown then you're usually trying to fight yourself from being there. And that's why I say there may potentially be fingerprints of hand grips on there where that individual is trying to protect herself from being thrown over. Unfortunately, without a forensic examination, no one will ever know if the cabin was a crime scene. Had they actually examined the cabin, the suspicion that he murdered his wife might have been supported by evidence located in that suite. You have to understand that there may be fingerprints all over the suite within the bathroom, the countertops, the railing outside on the cabin suite. No one will ever know if there were signs of a struggle or evidence of a murder having taken place there. Some of the factors and things that we would be looking for within that crime scene or potential crime scene would be, for example, blood. And when we're opening drawers, are there droplets of blood that someone in a state of panic forgot to clean up? We'd be looking for fingerprints. For example, if the individuals would have had their fingerprints all over the room because they're technically staying there. But the pattern of the fingerprints, if we were to dust the room, does it indicate that there might be or suspect to be an altercation that happened between two individuals. Also, for fibers of sort of the clothing that the individual was wearing, are there fibers that now are missing because her suitcase was missing? Or perhaps even any sort of indication that there was a cleanup or furniture that has been moved. These are all clues and signs that we would be looking for. While Wayne remained in prison, his lawyer made a proposal. Rodriguez asked Wayne if he thought it was possible that Sandra might have been having an extramarital affair. Police had no evidence that he had murdered his wife, yet they were unwilling to even accept the idea that she was alive somewhere and that she had walked away from their marriage. It really is unfortunate that the cabin wasn't able to be examined before they cleaned it. What if Sandra wasn't dead? What if she was alive and well, and living with a new identity, while Wayne sat in jail, waiting for trial for her disappearance? When passengers disembarked from their ship at the port of La Romana, in the Dominican Republic, 
at the end of their seven-day cruise, Wayne Donnelly's wife, Sandra, was identified as missing by the ship's electronic security system. The holiday with their two sons was a bit to restore some harmony to their marriage, but no one on board the ship had seen Sandra since the third day of the cruise. The day after the end of the cruise, Donnelly and his two sons were waiting in the departure lounge of Punta Cana International Airport to board their flight home to Phoenix. But the Dominican Republic National Police, having been alerted by ship's authorities that Donnelly's wife was missing, caught up with him just as he and the boys were about to board their flight. At a preliminary hearing, he was remanded by a judge and held in custody while an investigation began. The Donnelly's two sons, aged seven and nine, were flown to California to stay with Sandra's sister. When we start to speak with people that have either witnessed something or seen something that would aid in advocating for the deceased at the time, did they hear anything? Did they hear people arguing? Did they see anything? There was no indication that there was a altercation or any violence that occurred between the two individuals that were staying within that suite. It can be very difficult when there is very little physical evidence found and that the body is still missing. Unfortunately, investigators couldn't find a witness that might have heard a struggle. Donnelly's lawyer, Hector Rodriguez, was convinced of Wayne's innocence and believed that Sandra should be considered a missing person. With no evidence incriminating Donnelly, who was still in custody, Rodriguez made a bid for his release, but it was turned down. Police put a lot of emphasis on the fact that the ship's electronic records never recorded her disembarking from the ship when it was docked there. But could Sandra have secretly left the ship without anyone suspecting and boarded a flight out of Guadeloupe? There are a total of six airports in the Guadeloupe archipelago. The largest is Puente Pitre International Airport, about two and a half kilometers north of the port. The port's used by American, Canadian, French, and Caribbean airlines. As all the elements of a great story, mystery, intrigue, drama between the two partners, and of course, the adorable children. Unfortunately, the story is true. While Wayne remained in prison, his lawyer suggested an idea. Rodriguez asked Wayne if he thought it was possible that Sandra may have been having an extramarital affair and that she might have left the family to join her lover. Wayne was stunned at the suggestion, but agreed to the plan when Rodriguez proposed arranging for a forensic investigation of Sandra's laptop back in Phoenix. The hunch paid off, at least to some degree. Sandra's computer revealed that she had been using online dating sites over the previous two years. Wayne reflected on all the evenings she had told him she was working late and began to realize she may have been cheating on him. Even if Sandra was the kind of woman to have an affair, which is questionable, there's still no way that she would leave her children on that ship. Maybe she was angry enough to abandon Wayne and let him take the fall for her disappearance, but she wouldn't have left her children. The police, however, gave the Donnelly's marital problems little credence, and the investigation into Sandra's disappearance continued. To Wayne Donnelly's lawyer, Hector Rodriguez, the information obtained from Sandra's computer should be considered by the courts as credible evidence and that she wanted out of the marriage. But the police focused instead on Sandra's missing suitcase and the fact that the ship's records did not show her leaving the vessel in Guadeloupe. A trial date was set, with the prosecutors and the defense arguing forcefully for their sides. The judge finally reached his decision. The judge concluded 
that there were not sufficient grounds to proceed with a murder charge. There was no body and no evidence. A forensic examination of the Donnelly's cabin on board the ship was never conducted. Wayne Donnelly was released, free to return to the United States. Once home, Wayne flew to California, where his sons had been staying with his sister-in-law, Elaine, and brought them home to Phoenix. Back in the States, Wayne met up with his old college friend, Kevin, and confided in him that, other than Sandra's internet dating history, he couldn't find anything else that would point to her having a secret life outside their marriage. But Kevin told Wayne that when he was considering Sandra as the agent to handle his house sale, he witnessed her receiving calls on her mobile that had a definite flirtatious aspect. At the time, it made him wonder if she was conducting an affair. Wayne seemed to take the news well. He shrugged off the rumors of Sandra's cheating and said he had moved on with his life. But now, Wayne Donnelly's own past was about to catch up with him in Phoenix. Seeing an opportunity in Sandra's new career as an estate agent, Wayne convinced her to forge documents that would show the Donnellys sold the house they had purchased six years earlier before they repurchased it using false names at a greatly reduced price, thus setting them up for lower mortgage repayments. Fraud investigators looking to interview Sandra learned she had disappeared and Wayne was interviewed instead. It didn't take long for them to determine that he was part of the scheme and he was arrested and charged with fraud. It's somewhat ironic that you escape a murder charge in a foreign country only to come home and be investigated for fraud. 37-year-old Sandra Donnelly disappeared on the 9th of March, 2018, during a luxury Caribbean cruise with her family. Did she walk away from her marriage to start a new life elsewhere? Or was she murdered and her body disposed of at sea by her husband? The mother of two has never been heard from or seen by anyone since. Once the prime suspect in her disappearance, then cleared of a murder charge due to lack of evidence, Wayne Donnelly is almost certainly the only person who knows what could have happened to Sandra. While her whereabouts remain unknown, her husband now faces a possible prison sentence for a different crime. Oh, my God.